Hey guys, I thought it'd be fun to post lessons that I'm creating for my students on this YouTube channel. So feel free to like and subscribe so you can see new lessons that I'll be posting. And you can use the links in the description to grab more resources based on these lessons. Before we get started, I want to make sure that you have a paper, a pencil, or if you have a whiteboard and whiteboard marker. I also like to check for levels of understanding as we go through the lesson. Um, if you click the link below, I have a Google form that you can use to kind of rate yourself and see where you're at, or you can just write down a four, three, two, one on how you're feeling. Um, for thinking like, yeah, I've got this, I can teach this to somebody else. Three, uh, I'm going to need some help, but I think I'm on the right path. Two, I'm still a little bit confused and I need more practice. And one being like, oh man, I'm completely lost. And my goal is to see how, if you can rate yourself before the lesson and how we get started once I tell you our learning objective. And then by the end of the lesson, we'd like to see you increase your level of understanding. Um, you know, hopefully one level up if we can. Um, then if not, we can clear up any misconceptions at the end. So to start, uh, with today's lesson, we're going to be looking at how we can rename fractions in order to subtract. So taking a look at these two fractions, we have 3 and 2 thirds is equal to 2 and 5 thirds. And I know it may not look like it, but these two fractions are equivalent. We renamed 3 and 2 thirds to 2 and 5 thirds. And the skill we're going to practice today is going to help us to subtract, and it's going to help us with our overall learning intention, which is we are learning how to use fraction equivalents to subtract with renaming. So take just one minute and read that to yourself, or you can pause the video here just to make sure you understand, and then rate yourself at a level four, three, two, or one. How are you feeling about this learning intention, this learning objective, before we get started? As a review, um, it's important to understand models of fractions and how fractions can be divided to and what fractions represent. We know that fractions are part of a whole and we also need to keep in mind that we have numerators and denominators. Also, our big idea for the lesson um, is understanding that sometimes when we're subtracting, the fraction in the first mixed number is less than the fraction in the second mixed number. The whole number will be greater in the problems that we're looking at today, but if this happens, we have to rename the first mixed number. And to do that, we have to take apart the fraction and look at it a little bit differently. Now, I'm here back at this fraction that we started with, and I renamed this fraction by pulling apart the whole. I'm just gonna go through this and show you. Um, I needed to pull apart this three, so I made it a two and three thirds. I know that three thirds right here is equivalent to one whole, and when I add that to two, I get three. The reason I chose three thirds is because I wanted to use the same number in the denominator. I made that a denominator down here, and I also had to make it the numerator, so it would equal one whole. Since two and three thirds is equal to three, I also need to add that two thirds so that I can keep all of these numbers together. So two and three thirds plus two thirds is equal to two and five thirds. And this strategy today will help us as we um, go through and subtract some problems. So I'm just gonna erase that there and we're going to get started. I'm gonna model these two problems for you and then you can go ahead and start practicing as we go through them together. So this one here, I need to pull apart um, this two. I don't have a fraction to subtract. So when I pull that apart, I need to make this two into a fraction. So I'm gonna use it as one and three thirds. Remembering I'm using that three because it's my denominator. Three thirds is equal to one whole. One plus one is two. And now I can subtract. I have common denominators. Three minus one is two. I have the same denominator. One minus one is zero. So my answer is two thirds. I'm just going to go ahead and go over that one more time. If I change my two, to one and three thirds, that's still equivalent to two. Then I can subtract one and one third. 
and my answer, let me go back really quickly, would be two thirds. Now here are my steps as I go through um, this subtracting situation. Sometimes we'll need to find a common denominator, so we'll do that first if necessary. We have to identify which number we're going to rename in our fraction. We'll pull out that fraction and rename, and then we can subtract. And don't forget, we should simplify also at the end. So I'm going to show you one more example, and then we'll go through and practice some together. So in this case, I need to find a common denominator. I'm going to go ahead and use 8 so I can keep this bottom guy the same. How do I get from 4 to 8? I multiply by 2. Whatever I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. 1 times 2 is 2. So now I'm going to rewrite this as 4 and 2 eighths minus 2 and 5 eighths. I still can subtract, so now I need to rename this top fraction here. So I'm going to rename it as 3 and 8 eighths. That's how I rename the 4. That's my step 2. And I'm also going to add that 2 eighths. Can't forget about that. So I will have, I'm going to write it down here. Oh, I'm going to erase that, sorry. I'm going to write this as 3 and 10 eighths because I added the 8 eighths plus the 2 eighths minus 2 and 5 eighths. And now I can subtract. 3 minus 2 is 1, 10 minus 5 is 5, and same denominator, 8. I don't have to simplify, and my answer is 1 and 5 eighths. So to go through the steps one more time, I just want to make sure we find a common denominator if necessary. We identify a number to rename, we pull out that fraction, and subtract. So if you want to, you can pause the video and try this on your own, and then see if you get it correct as you go through, um, or you can stick along and go with me. So I don't have a fraction, so I'm going to rename the 11 to 10 and 10 tenths. The reason I'm doing that is because I'm using this denominator. 10 tenths is equivalent to 1, 1 plus 10 is 11. So now I can subtract. I don't need to look for a common denominator, there's already one. And I can subtract, I get 6 and 9 tenths. This fraction is already simplified. And let's think about your level of understanding right now. How are you feeling? Are things getting easier? Is it getting better? Are you feeling good? Let's try this one. This one I don't have to find a common denominator. Again, if you would like to pause and try it on your own, go ahead. If you want to stick with me, then we can do this together. Since there's already a common denominator, I don't need to worry about that, but I do need to rename the 5. I'm going to rename it as 4 and 5 fifths. And I can't forget about the 2 fifths. So now I have 4 and 7 fifths minus three and four fifths, and now I can subtract. Four minus three is one, seven minus four is three, same denominator, five. So now my answer is one and three fifths. There's no need to simplify, it's already simplified. Okay, moving right along. Let's try this one. Again, I already have a common denominator, but I can't take away nine from three, so we'll rename the nine. 9 becomes 8 and 10 tenths. I can't forget about the 3 tenths. And when I put that together, my new fraction is 8 and 13 tenths minus 5 and 9 tenths. And uh, 13 minus 9 is 4. And I have 4 tenths, 8 minus 5 is 3. I can simplify 3 and 4 tenths. Let's see, 4 can go into 2 2 times, and 10 can go into 2 5 times, so my answer is 3 and 2 fifths. All right. Okay, let's erase this. So we have 3 and 2 fifths. And... Let's try this one now. So for this one, I do need to find a common denominator first. I'm going to make this a 6. Keep this one as a 6. 
How did I get from 3 to 6? I multiplied by 2. 1 times 2 is 2. So now I have 7 and 2, 6 minus 2 and 5, 6. I have to rename the 7 because I can't take away 5 from 2. I'm going to rename that as 6 and 6, 6 plus 2, 6. So now I have 6 and 8, 6 minus 2 and 5, 6. And I can subtract. 6 minus 2 is 4. I'm going to write it over here. 8 minus 5 is 3. So 4 and 3, 6. But that can be simplified. 2, 4, and 1 half. All right. Hope we're feeling good and moving up on our levels of understanding. What was our learning objective today? So going back to um, our target here, we were learning how to use fraction equivalents to subtract with renaming. So now take a final um, minute here to think about your level of understanding. How are you feeling? Um, did you move up? Did you move down? Do you need more practice? And as we close our lesson, let's take a look at some closure questions. If Ario had five gallons of paint and he used two and five eighth gallons, how much paint does he have left? So we could use cubes. I like to use cubes to solve where we see, circle our numbers. U, underline the question. B, box those key and action words. Like used tells us that it's going to be subtraction because there's nothing left. How much um, also tells us that we're probably going to be using subtraction, right, in the word left. So if he had five gallons of paint and he used two and five eighths, how much would he have left? So we need to create this subtraction problem, and it looks like we're going to have to rename that five since I don't have a fraction. So I'm going to rename it as four and eight eighths minus two and five eighths, and my answer would be two and three eighths gallons. That's how much paint he has left, and it can't be simplified. Let's take a look at our next closure question. This one is, I'm asking, what was done wrong here? Was it done correctly, or was there something wrong? Um, and I wanted you to go through it and kind of explain what happened. So go ahead and pause the video and see if you can figure out what's wrong and come back and see um, if you figured it out. So it looks to me, well, first, you know what? I'm going to solve the problem. Let's make common denominators here. Let's multiply the top by 2 since we multiplied 3 times 2, and this one stays a 5. So now I have 5 and 4, 6 minus 3 and 5, 6, but we can't take away 5 from 4, so we're going to rename the 5 to 4 and 6, 6, plus that 4, 6. So we should have 4 and 10, 6 minus 3 and 5, 6. And when I subtract, I should get 3, oh, nope, sorry, 4 minus 3 is 1, 1, and 5, 6. So it looks like to me the problem with this problem is that they did find a common denominator, but instead of renaming this 5, it looks like they just did 5 minus 4 to get 1. So that would be the problem that they did. They did not rename the 5 in order to solve it and subtract it correctly. Okay, so there are some links down um, in the description for you to click on if you want to have some more practice. Um, and I hope this was helpful. Again, like and subscribe if you want to see more videos uh, relating to some direct instruction and some practice for fifth grade concepts. All right, thank you so much.